So today we go back to zombie basics. And when I say basics, I mean the basics. If Cold War has taught me anything, it's that there is a ton of new people coming over to zombies and a lot of them ask the same simple questions about the mode. Also, with a free trial coming in just three days time, I thought that now would be a perfect time to make a basic Call of Duty Zombies guide. This video will contain everything from the basics of the mode to how things such as perk, pack-a-punch and wonder weapons work. And trust me when I say this, they are so simple to understand. Anyway, let's start with the basics. So what is zombies and what is the main objective of the mode? So zombies is a co-op mode in which you fight through rounds of zombies which progressively get more difficult the higher round you go. You get to create a class in the main menu with a lot of options to upgrade the firepower of your weapon as you play. The way you upgrade this is an in-game currency which is zombie essence and this is displayed above your name and your health bar whilst you are playing. This essence can be used in many ways but the main one is to open the doors on the map. When you spawn into zombies, you'll be in a small area, which we call the spawn area. The objective at the start is to kill zombies until you've collected enough essence to start buying the doors and reaching the power room. Cold War Zombies has changed the game with this and it actually shows you where to go. But it's still very important that you collect essence because a lot of it is needed. The amount of essence you get is based on how you actually kill the zombie. A normal kill is 90 essence and a headshot or a crit shot is 115 essence and then knife and a zombie will also give you 115 essence. One thing I forgot to mention right at the start was actually field upgrades. This is something you select before going into the game in the menu and it's an ability that you can use every 5 or so minutes depending on how many zombies you kill. Now these are like super abilities which they give you things such as extra damage, they can make you invisible or they can actually revive all the players that are down in the game. Now these are just 3 out of 5 that you can choose, I'll let you go and experiment with them on yourself and I think that covers the basics of zombies and how the mode works so let's move on to Pack-a-Punch. So the Pack-a-Punch is the way you upgrade the damage of your weapons in Zombies. Once you've unlocked the Pack-a-Punch machine, again, there'll be a prompt on screen showing you how to unlock it. And if not, there's also a guide on my channel. You will then be able to Pack-a-Punch your weapon three times. This, however, costs a lot of essence, so it's something that you're going to need to save up for. The first pack of punch is 5,000 essence, the second is 15,000 and the third is 30,000. So in total, it would be around 50,000 essence to pack a punch your weapon to the maximum damage. So this is going to take a lot of time because on top of this, you need to juggle your pack a punch with your perks and we'll talk more about perks next. There is also one more way that you can upgrade your weapons, which was introduced in Cold War and that is the upgrade station. This is located in the Pack-a-Punch area in the middle of the room and as you kill zombies they will drop common and rare salvage. You can then use this salvage to increase the rarity of your gun to, again, make it even more powerful. One last thing on this topic is ammo mods. These can be selected in the Pack-a-Punch machine as well and these give your gun certain abilities like there's a fire explosion or there's electrocuting the zombies. Or you can even turn a zombie friendly for about a minute or so. But I think that covers pack a punching and upgrading weapons. So let's move on to perks. So perks work the same as they do in multiplayer, except Zombies has had its own set of perks since the beginning. To save time, I will just put on screen all the perks in Cold War and what they do. Now you can hold as many of these perks as you like, however be careful because when you get downed by a zombie, you start losing your perks as you are bleeding out. This can actually be stopped by being revived as quickly as possible, but you will still lose at least one perk. One final thing is that each time you buy a perk, the next one will be 500 essence more. So it starts off at 2,500 essence, but then your second perk will be 3,000, then the next one will be 3,500 and so on. And other than that, there is actually nothing else to cover in perks. It's, it's honestly so simple to understand. Now on to wonder weapons. These are normally quest related weapons that are far more powerful than the rest. However, these can also be obtained from the mystery box if you've got some luck and you really don't want to learn the quest. 
For example, the wonder weapon of D-Machine is the D.I.E. Shockwave. This weapon shoots a huge blast of energy at the zombies, killing multiple at the same time. Wonder weapons can then usually be upgraded into different elements, giving them different abilities. And in Die Machine, for example, these elements are fire, electric, ice, and toxic or nova gas. Each of these elements will have their own little unique quest line to get them, and this unfortunately is the only way to get an elemental upgrade. You cannot find these upgrades inside the mystery box. However, the quests are super simple to do. They're honestly like one or two step quests and they're really easy to do. I have a guide for them on my channel for you to check out. On top of this, you also have the Ray Gun, which is a super powerful but very rare weapon. And this goes even into the round 100 plus and is still as powerful as it was before. There is no quest line to get the ray gun. Like I said, it's just super rare to find. You have multiple ways in the machine to get it. And these are from the mystery box, from shooting the crystals inside of the dark ether. You can complete challenges from the little computer. And then there's also the coffin dance Easter egg, which again is a super simple little quest line to do. And I have a guide for that on my channel. And other than that, that will wrap up with the weapons. Okay, now time for something quick. This is the armor. In Cold War, they introduced a new armor system, which allows you to be hit more times by the zombie before actually being downed. The way to get this armor is at the same upgrade station as your weapon. And again, it costs salvage to upgrade it to a maximum of tier 3. If your armor breaks, you can then go back to this station and repair it for super cheap. Other than that, there's actually nothing else to armor. It's just basically a little extra bit of protection from the zombies. Next is something new to zombies, which is the X-Fill system. If you are getting tired and you want to just give up, starting from round 11, you have the chance to escape the map to earn extra rewards. When you reach round 11, you will get a prompt to X-Fill if you want to. However, you can simply ignore it and carry on playing the game as normal and the prompt will come back every five rounds so you can really time your escape a lot better. Once you start this exfil you will have to run to the landing zone and kill a certain amount of zombies. However these zombies have a lot more health than usual and you will only have 90 seconds to kill all of them before or you will fail the exfil. If you manage to kill them all you run to the helicopter and board it, you escape, you get some extra XP and Ethereum crystals, and if you fail, the helicopter will blow up and the game will end with no extra rewards. Okay, we're getting closer to the end now, guys. I promise. The next thing is Ethereum crystals. These are rewarded for every five rounds you survive in zombies or are rewarded as bonus things for X-filling. These crystals can be used to upgrade a bunch of things such as weapons and perks to give them an even bigger benefit when playing the game. To check how many you have, you can just go to the skills menu before you go into the game and you can choose what you want to upgrade along the way. This is a reason why Zombies is so replayable this year because there is like, I think 60 to 70 crystals you can get just for the first set of things that you need to unlock with many more coming in future DLCs. Okay, so the final thing would be the main Easter egg quest. This is not something you are required to do. And you could just simply kill tons of zombies until your heart's content or until you exfil. However, there is a bigger quest to zombies maps, which involves multiple things such as fun puzzles and challenges to progress to like a final boss fight arena, which is super fun to do. So I really do suggest giving it a go. Again, I have a guide for this on my channel. If you want to try it for yourself, you don't have to. It is optional. But again, I really do highly suggest giving this Easter egg quest line a go because it's super fun to do. Right, I know I said the final thing, but I actually forgot about one important thing. And that's the crafting table. This is, again, another place you can spend salvage to buy things such as grenades, stim shots, and even a chopper gunner. Because if you haven't noticed, you don't actually launch into the game with any sort of grenades. It's just a weapon and your field upgrade. This is how you buy your grenades in the map. This was again something they introduced with Code War and changes how Zombies played by adding fun things to spend that an in-game currency on. These tables are at two locations on the map, which is in the spawn area and inside the tunnel. Okay, now I think I've covered everything about Zombies. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. I know this has been a long video. And if you are someone who is a hardcore player and knows everything about zombies, but you stuck around, well, thank you so much for actually just sticking around to listen to me. 
If you are new to zombies, I really hope this guide helped you get into the mode more and I hope you enjoy the mode as much as I do. If you are a fan of COD and you like my content, then make sure to subscribe before you leave. I promise you, you will not regret it. It would be awesome to hit 21k subs by the end of January. We're just 500 subs away. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.